delusion. Mm -hmm. As in people who are charging a certain amount that perhaps it's not worth paying them that amount. And you have to structure a film accordingly. Now some studios perhaps took some kind of decisions that may have, and we all have, we've all gone wrong mm -hmm. as, as boutique production houses like Dharma Productions or studios. There have been certain, I don't think like, well I'll tell you, Yash Chopra once told me, films don't fail, budgets do. And uh, it was, of course, a, a, a very powerful thought made by a veteran filmmaker. But very honestly, there was virtue and reality in what he said. That if you budget a film and you make sure that, you know, every single... If you have a film that does not warrant a certain price in a certain territory, you must not charge it. That kind of gumption you have to have as a filmmaker. I can proudly say that at Dharma Productions, we make sure that no studio has ever lost money with us. When, when I was with UTV and Ronnie right. and we released a film called Kurban that didn't do well, mm -hmm. the immediate successor to that was a film called I Hate Love Stories, which actually we gave them at like cost level so that they would make up the loss. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I've had incidents like that with Fox and with Eros on um, when we've done three films internationally with them. Uh, it's very important and that's something that I've been inherently trained to do by my father, is when you partner with the studio to make sure that it's not just, they're not a funding bank for you, that are just going to steamroll you and you don't do anything for them back in return. So yes, if certain studios are re-strategizing their way, there is reason, because the monies that you get out of just pure Hindi firm exposure in terms of distribution is not what you are imagining it to be. Because there are, you are empowered by certain verticals like satellite. But satellite buys certain kinds of films. Because what works on Indian television sometimes necessarily does not equal box office success. Sometimes a film that may have failed at the box office rates tremendously on television. And vice right. versa. Right. It's happened like statistically, I'll tell you. Um, there are films of mine like say A Student of the Year that does a 70 crore net at box office but has a 4.4 rating on television. Whereas Ye Jawani Devani does 180 crores at the box office but does a 3.2. At the television. So there is no logic. Right. Then I've heard of many humongous movies um, uh, that have not rated that high, and some films that were failures that have rated. So even with music, one doesn't know. So studios like, say, UTV, when they make so much money on a Jungle Book, and then with a film uh, with a Captain America that releases post that, and then they see their balance sheet of losses on other films, they probably re strategize, reinvent. But I don't think that for very long they're going to distance themselves. They will be back in the game, I'm sure, but at new modalities, new rules, new regulations, new infrastructure creations. Right. Uh, so yes, it's time for analysis. It's time for us to take a step back and see that when we make movies, and we, I learned for me there's never a failure, there's always a lesson. And every time there's been a lesson learned from a failure, I try and engulf that within the, the you know, the process at Dharma and make sure those, those mistakes aren't made again. It's all about cost efficiency, budget control, and monitor your level of delusion. There's no way that I can start believing that every product of mine is a supreme product and is going to open to thunderous houses. Today when you get that opening, it is something that is rare. That early morning gush that was a given in the 80s. When you had big movie stars, those films opened irrespective of its content. Today, you're, you're targeting, you're, you, you have something called a tracking meter. You know, your Ormax is a research company that tells you your opening day box office prediction. And then you're seeing things like appeal, interest, reach, buzz. Uh, all that has become much more like unox the indoors to the shows they do, to the entrepreneurship that they have. Be Shah Rukh Khan, who is also an entrepreneur, you know, he owns a cricket team. Mm -hmm. He's always been exceptionally business savvy. Uh, so, you know, a beat uh, to uh, exceptionally, they're all businessmen as well. So they leverage their positions as movie stars and have taken it to various levels, which is intelligent and very forward, progressively, uh, progressive moving of them. Uh, it's not always, very few actors really have just made a certain amount of wealth as a result of the movies they've done. There are always other avenues of income. Mm -hmm. So when they're on the Forbes list, it's not just the wealth they have amassed within the movie structure. It's out of it as well. Because you, what happens is the stardom is much larger than the money in your bank. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, Naam Bada Darshan Chota. It's literally that's a way. People think that we all have enough wealth to put into Swiss banks. It's not true at all. It's a myth. You could be a brand in this country, but not necessarily match the bandwidth 
of that brand economically at all. You may actually have nothing compared to people who are lesser known. Sure. Because the movies have a tendency of making you seem larger than life. The very intelligent men and women in the business have actually invested well, have actually been more gone beyond the periphery of their fraternity and gone beyond it. And I think that's why they, they come into those lists mm. because the wealth is just not cinema. It's brand plus what they do with it. Right, right. But uh, given that cinema will always be, at least mainstream cinema will always be star driven, do you think that at some level the film industry in itself gets beholden by four or five people and when their movies come out, it's a hit? Otherwise, you just don't know. It's actually, if you ask me, the middle order cinema is what's going to suffer. Mm. It's the, what you know as indie cinema in the sure. West. It's the tiny, powerful film, the Piku, the Pink, mm. the Nirja, the Kapoor and Sons, the, the Urta Punjab, the cost to profit ratios, which are actually enormous. Mm. Those will be the, the, the gems of the year. And then there'll be the big event film, mm. the Bajrangi Bhajan, the Sultan, the Reis, the Fan, the, you know, the, 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 the Dangal, the bigger movies. It's the middle order that you need to really monitor. You know, really, you have to kind of make sure that those are not, don't go over the top in terms of budget. Because then everybody has to come on board. Actors have to know, if they love a script, you can't go crazy charging that kind of money. And then everything else, then, you know, has to peter down along with it. Uh, because the cost of marketing a film at, at the minimum level is 6 crores. Mm. The maximum can go up to 20. Right. But even if yours is a tiny endeavor, you have to spend an X amount of money. Or then you be very creative about you. Like when we were presenting and marketing Lunchbox, it was a challenge because we had little money. Mm. But we had to make whatever noise we could. So you become clever. And those are few and far bit. And a lot of academia and a lot of thought has to go into marketing a tiny film. Not every film, firstly, is worthy of a larger audience within that context. Right. Like when I saw Lunchbox at Cannes, I, I told uh, the UTV guys, I said, this film will make money. But you have to be clever about it. So we came up with, say, a line like, how do you fall in love with someone you never met? You build intrigue. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to kind of do that. So there is a structure, but not every film warrants that. After that, there were a series of films that came to our table about, let's do this. It's a tiny film, just mm -hmm. like Lunchbox. Mm -hmm. No, there's one Lunchbox. Right. It's not every film that will do the same. There were many other endeavors and Me Too's of that zone, but not all of them struck a chord with an audience. So as I said, going back to your mm. question, it's the smaller film and the large, the small film with high content and the larger film with big movie star or then maybe big CG appeal, etc. That will make a big mark. The middle order has to be monitored or else it will be, it will result in the closure of many films, many studios and many careers. But I mean, I mean you know this better than anybody else, of course, in this auditorium is that at the end of the day, the audience really goes looking at who's, who's the face on the That's day right? one. The, right. the whole thing has changed, man, which I think we call, uh, I call it the Saturday phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Like the good films are the Saturday films, the ones that really get spoken about on Friday. And one thing about our country you have to know, word of mouth travels faster than anything else. Your film is good in the morning, by the afternoon, you'll see the spike. By the night, you'll see back tolls. The Saturday will be humongous. I've seen that in all films that have been appreciated. So it's no longer... Yes, for the certain films, the day one is going to be driven by perhaps those three or five large movie stars. Mm. But let me tell you, your film is good. You see the spike through the day. Like, it's what happened recently with the success of Pink. Right. Uh, it started at a certain number. It ended at a much higher number. And the next day, the growth was phenomenal. And Sunday was like... It was cemented that it was a big success. Right. So, as I said, it's now today become a Saturday. It's all become all about the Saturday. And your Saturday holds strongly, you know your home. So it's no longer, don't, I, I feel, do, don't go crazy with the film marketing it if you don't feel it has the right chops to get that number on day one. Because no matter what you do, you won't get the number. If your film is really strong, show it internally. Do your research screenings. Show it to 200 people. That is this appealing to all PGs of people. You know, make sure you do that before you hit the cinema hall. And then, of course, you know you get an indication it's a good film. It will, it will definitely go on to do a large number. Unless, of course, it's... See, there is... We have restrictions of genre. Like, you know, there is deep, dark content also that won't travel. But elevating film... All the films that have done well, actually, that have been tiny. If you notice, there's a certain sparkle and happiness to them, eventually. The deeper, darker films do kind of have a restriction, eventually. We are not a country that is very accepting to dark genre. A period. Those don't cross a certain number. No matter either it's a it's a Raman Raghav or Urta Punjab, there will be a restriction eventually because darkness, grey areas of relationships or just generally gritty dark themes um, don't meet with a favorable audience. Right, but I was talking more in terms of uh, investment in 
uh, human resources as it were, or investment in movie stars as it were, what happened, names, but they remain the top guys even in 2016. Like, was there something that the film industry did not consciously invest in to, to create brands uh, from then till now? It's actually the thing is that these men have gone through their own ups and downs with their sure. careers. You know, they always have. But they built an equity from a time that is very tough for the younger generation because they built an equity in a time where footfalls were very high, mm. where people knew them. So their generation went on to produce children who loved the same stars. And then the footfalls fell. So these younger generation movie actors do not have the pleasure or the privilege of those large numbers that these stars that were built in the 90s and the late 80s had. Shah Rukh Khan came up in 91, Amir Khan in 88, and uh, as Salman, I think, in 89, with Mene Pyar Kiya. 88, 89, 91, they had a decade heads up mm. of building an equity, which none of these actors today, those numbers have not been seen, the number of people, you are made a big star by the number of people worldwide that have seen your movies. Mm. The equity built through the films that Shah Rukh, Amir, Salman, and Akshay have done through, through these two decades, that number, none of these gener the, no matter so, what the hit number. So but are you saying that 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 idea of the superstar, as it were, is a is a nineties thing? It's not it's not possible to rebuild that. I'm not, not saying anything is mm. impossible because mm. you can never say never. But sure. it's going to be very tough mm. for a Ranveer Singh or a Ranveer Kapoor to kind of build the equity. And it's I'm saying they have the talent. They're amazingly mm. talented actors. But to build that audience base, that 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 exceptionally loyal, faithful fanatic fans of yours you need to build those movies that have done those numbers over a period of time just like um, Amitabh Bachchan who had built his equity from the 70s and 80s and it was only when these when these boys came up who had the same audience numbers mm. they started dwindling in the multiplex era post 2001 those numbers started reducing considerably with the advent of plexes and when single screens were slightly diminished as a result of the plex audience, which means the pricing became more expensive, which means because of economic factors, we lost a very large audience. So there's a whole section now that used to watch movies in the 70s and 80s and the 90s up to mid-level 90s. They don't watch movies at all anymore. They come out once for, for like... Pai's film is out mm -hmm. and they'll come out on Eid and Diwali in, in stormy numbers. There are huge amount, and the other thing is the time factor is something like the biggest superstar in this country, according to me, is still the national holiday. Mm -hmm. That is the biggest superstar. We have mega stars. Salman is a mega star. Shah Rukh Kamil, humongous stars. But that combined with a national holiday is an unbeatable combination because we're still a country that has so much happening in our lives. You know, we're fighting urban angst every day. You're fighting your career crisis every day. You're fighting your own family issues every day. We're very involved in our zone. That happens in a country such as ours. It's only that national holiday, that Sunday, where we feel that we can really get out to watch a film. So it's the biggest superstar, I believe, is the national holiday. But I'll take you up on, on the single screen and the multiplex. And that happened in the 2000s. Uh, Distinction, as it were. Look, there is an urban. There is a, a films that are very. Um, you call it the high urban film. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have those that where the lines are blurred, uh, like you know films like say that actually do well in both sections. You know, like say a Sultan or a Bajrangi Bhaijan that has record very high collections. Right. Of so we would imagine Salman to be a single screen star. But his no, but his doing, movies. Yeah. But his movies. The last two movies <laughs> have done phenomenal yeah. business, in, right. and it's and if you see it. You cannot do high numbers till you don't appeal to the multiplex audience. It's mm. not possible because that has become the chunk of the pie. Mm. It's a 70-30 divide on a very big film. Mm. 30 single screen, 70 multiplex. So when that multiplex audience has, has really lapping up every Salman Khan film, ever since Wanted actually, mm. he's become a rage in both sections. Mm. And as is Shah Rukh and as is Amir carrying the equity forward from what they built in the 80s and 90s. Mm. Uh, that combination is, ri is ridiculously unbeatable. Mm. And these younger boys, I can tell, and right up to now, if you see even today, mm. we're in 2016, 2017, 18, you still have the big festivals blocked by the big boys. Mm. So it's almost like there are obstacles for like these younger kids right. who are also not any young, young anymore. They're all in their 30s. Right. So it's going to be very difficult for them to build that equity in this country. 
because they just don't have the support of those humongous numbers. It's like those guys who were young in the 80s, produced children now in this generation. Mm. And they're still loving Salman Khan and Shah Rukh Khan as much as they did then. The kids automatically start loving them just by... Then they build their own love for like say Varun Dhawan or Ranbir Kapoor or Ranbir Singh or Siddharth Malhotra. They build that equity. And, but that love has to come in humongous numbers. It's all, if, a, if you really academically analyze it, it's a number game. It's just the number of people that have loved are much more than they are loving today. <laughs> but even then, so, you as a producer, Karan, you invested in three people, you decided to put your name onto a film, and it was very clear to everyone exactly why you're doing it, because then you created three new stars to give a uh, face. To rest assured, yeah. I did it more for myself. Sure. Uh, I, I did it because I felt I wanted to make my youngest film at 40. Mm -hmm. And I knew it was going to be a high school musical that would be like not loved by critics or anyone who knows anything about cinema would think that's pop culture frivolous fun at, at best perhaps. Uh, I was very aware of it, but I needed to make my youngest film because I had done My Name is Khan and Kabhi Alvida, which were slightly heavier themes. And I felt I needed to be relevant to a younger generation. It was a calculated move at my end. Because I felt like kids who were 12 and 13 and 11 didn't know me as a filmmaker. And I felt that if I need to survive for the next two decades as a relevant filmmaker, I need them to know who I am. So Student of the Year was a, a, a franchise created to connect to the kids, which is what I did. And I, I didn't dumb myself down because I love that kind of zone. Like I love song and dance and happiness and, and great looking fun people feeling. And I just felt I needed to feel young to make this young film. I did it. I did not do it to launch their careers and do it for them selflessly. It was a selfish move. In turn, the three of them actually went on to have careers, which I'm very proud of. And all of them deserve the places that they have got in cinema. But that was a very structured, strategized move because I felt I'd reached a time that if I made yet another star vehicle, I was going to get into the zone, you know, and that I wasn't going to get out of. Taking a superstar and taking a big release date and you coming along with that is playing safe somewhere, you know. And I think that you need to kind of, for your company, work and focus on different energies. Like, to me, a dharma, the ethos is to make all kinds of movies. Of course, I would love to do the superstar vehicle film. But I, if you recently see that I try to put my my infrastructure and resources on movies that are slightly unusual. Sometimes you'll hit the spot, sometimes you won't at all. Uh, it's really a hit and miss zone. But I've tried to do it with young like like younger the younger actors constantly it's been our endeavor always like when we made wake up sit with ranbir our next move with him was to mount him in a, and on a ye jawani adivani and give him that epic love scale you know to kind of make sure that we kind of grow within the realm of the younger generation i i'm a big supporter of wanting these kids to kind of really grow right but you're you are at some level the old world producer as well in the sense that you're a creative producer you'll put in thought behind things you do, it's, it's you're also a creative person in terms of whether you're directing the film or not. Right. I mean, you take ownership of the product, as it were. But when I compare, when we compare someone like you, someone like Aditya Chopra, to, say, a Disney or a Viacom, which are, you know, which are, you know, headed by people from marketing backgrounds, uh, people from perhaps not even... Really like running, a, um, like a running a home or a kitchen in a, in a, in a home, mm -hmm. as opposed to a five-star hotel. Really, you know, you'll put in that much more, everything, you will look at every ingredient that goes into every piece of food that you make. Mm -hmm. Whereas in a five-star hotel, you're going to kind of try to, say, make things in bulk and not perhaps be attached to every spice that goes into every dish. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're pretty much, Adi and me come from that school where I never, none of us actually are ever on set when we make a film, we green light a script and we stay away. Mm -hmm. And then we enter the stage when the film, and sometimes you... I've, I watched a couple of films and I, at the final stage I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be an epic disaster. There's nothing to do. Mm -hmm. We can just like just say, okay, God bless us and move on. Mm -hmm. or, or there are films that you know you can fight and do something with it and, you know, reshoot, probably re-add. And it's more nurturing. It's much more internal. And that's what we try and do at our end. I think we're more booty. Of course, Yashraj is the larger right. studio and it has an infrastructure and or an entire distribution, um, um, like, uh, vertical along with it. But I think both, the ethos of both Adi and mine are the same. We're more, we're more hands-on and look at everything. And of course, we leave it be, like, I believe the director should actually be left on his or her own devices eventually. And there are many a time, both of us, we exchange notes, we're best friends. Mm -hmm. We speak to each other, and I always ring him up before a release of mine that I think is going to fail. Never a one that's going to succeed. So do you show it to her? No, we don't show each other's either, but we talk to each other. I'm like, yeah, this Friday is going to be awful. 
full is going to flop. Mm. So he was like, you know, why do you say that? I'm like, it's a really bad film. Now what to do? So he's like, now what do you do? And then he told me, like, don't don't watch this film or don't tell me what you thought of it. Like we have an honest discussion because none of that's the one thing that I learned from him and he learned from his dad is that none of us are deluded. We know when a film is wrong. But we still made it right. We have to put it out. And we have like, I've actually sat with the director once. Only the director and I know this. We sat, he showed me the final cut of his film. And I said, okay, chalo, listen, this is an epic disaster. You must know this. You're a bright boy. You went wrong. We've all gone wrong. Now we will go out and act. We will go out and tell the marketing team it's great. We'll tell the actors it's amazing. And uh, we'll, we'll sell it like it's the best film in the world. But you must know it's not good. And it's going to flop. So he was like, and he with a white face looked at me and said, how can you say that? I'm like, because I can't lie to you. Because then the next time when I like your film, you won't believe me. So that's why it's important. You must know, ye flop hone wali hai. Lekin abhi hame bhoat buri flop hai. Lekin uske ho kabhi, dekho flop picture ko pechanna bhoat asan ho jata hai. It's the hit ones that are tough to tell. Because you never know. You know, the ones I'm always nervous about, I'm always very calm on the morning of a flop film. Because I know. You know, it's the hit ones that I pop pills for because you have an expectation within you know the, the flop once you just know i'm an audience i've been watching films in a cinema hall in packed single screen since i was four years old i'm a full filmy bacha like them. you cannot be more filmy than me i've clapped i've cried i'm that popcorn eating wala audience that you know that cries in cinema halls and claps in a moment like i become like that so when i watch a flop film i know it dude i just know it is not a run no no i don't care what you think of it i know it already like you know whatever and of course i read the it's the ones you can attach to that you really feel can do that extra mile mm. those are the ones you know see that kind of sense only some of us producers right. who've been in the thick of Hindi right. films have right. Adi has it I have it we know when we messed up mm. sometimes you'll go like very rarely you'll go wrong with your instinct like you know like I got very attached to say I, wrongly so perhaps perhaps mm. it was not a film that connected like see a film like Kurban when I watched I had liked it aesthetically mm. I, I, I liked the film so when it bombed it was a bit of a surprise for me. You know, sometimes once in your whole career, you'll go through that zone where a film that you did not get, that you got attached to and it didn't work. Mm. Those are moments of great disappointment. Now, what happens in the studio system is that people who are more or less come in are not cine, cine, Hindi cinema or Indian cinema lovers like we have. We've grown up. I've grown up watching every kind of feature film you can think of. You know, I've gone to those trial shows as a child and, you know, I was one of those kids that when the census certificate said 23 reels, I used to get excited. You know, that number, and it was 15, it was like, hi, kiwiti choti picture kiwi hai. You know, it was like, it was like, not like today, where we are like, ha, three hours, who's going to watch three hours? Like, it's not like that. It used to be exciting when it was a long film, you know? And when there was a sensor cut, there used to be a triangle, and used to be like, oh, I wonder what got cut. <laughs> like, you know, we, we were those, and if there was an adult with that big circle around it, you definitely wanted to see that film. So I grew up in that era, so I, there's no way that we don't have an understanding. So go back to the basic point of our chat, is that some of us are just, in a beautiful way, old school, old world film trained right. and with modern sensibilities, we are actually in a really great place to run movie studios. But unfortunately, we need the funding because we are all like, you know, we are all like, we have like either created wealth or inherited wealth and our wealth is just enough for us to keep putting it back into the movies. Like I, I, I don't have the kind of infrastructure or monies to take multiple risks. So if someone comes that, are you willing to make a film that we don't know going to run? I said, no, I don't want to make this film. I don't want to know. I want to make a film that I believe can make money. I'm not here to take those chances and risks. I cannot, I can't afford it. Not for my company, not for anything. Right. So, uh, like, mortgages the house, put, puts in everything he's got into a film, then the movie bombs, then he's on the street. That was like my dad. Right. He was that man. I used to wake up in the morning on a film release, he gets six failures in a row. Mm. And it was like always I saw him in his white kurta and his lungi with his head on his hand and like Monday go drop away picture. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, Ajay, <laughs> what to do? And the CPCI ka distributor ka phone aata tha and we knew it was like, like tension ka mamla because we knew the film was not going to run for whatever reason. My mother and I were always more in tune. Mm. Um, and it, I've seen that happen, that old school world of filmmaking as charming as it was it was very heartbreaking sure. because you know those were also tough days where we've actually literally i mean i know for a fact like my dad has actually had to sell a piece of property of his to make up for the losses of a film it's happened in front of my eyes those were financer days where you paid interest you got finance private finance put it and everything was riding on that where you dealt with not managers but star secretaries and everyone spoke punjabi mm -hmm. it was 
the industry language in the 80s. Like for some reason, I thought that there was nobody who, no other community who made movies. Because my father only spoke to people in Punjabi. Actors spoke Punjabi, distributors spoke Punjabi. And you know, they were the, and those Punjabi distributors used to say funny things, you know, on the phone. So it was like, I still remember, I thought Kuch Kuch Hota was like a big hit. And I got a call, the Bihar distributor called and I was screening like a peacock in those days because I thought I had made this big ball. And I and on the phone, the Bihar distributor told me, Are kya picture banadi? average gay in our territory. Mein. So I was like, what does super hit nahi nahi, Dule Raja is a big hit. Kuch kuch hota average gay. I was shattered. I said, I don't know what this Bihar distributor is talking about when I put the phone down. But it was a reality. It was like, today who knows what you, we don't even see a territory wise breakdown. Now we get the figure, like the whole you know, box office figure. So, so much has evolved and changed and... You could say, Mayank, that some of the charm and the old school world has been replaced by the in by the excessive corporate nature of our movies. But it's the order of the day. It's just like we don't have celluloid anymore. We are digital, right. so now we are corporate. <laughs> but does it change things though, where you you're so hugely invested in a film rather than when you are a corporate firm? And you know, so what if it doesn't do well? You could just switch jobs. That's yeah, but that's happen. them. It's not us. And it, I'm I'm. So you you think that that could be one of the factors? Uh, of the decline as it were or, I, or at least a slow down? I it? would like to believe that everyone invested in movies has a passion for the product they're attached to and I believe that the corporates I deal with like when I deal with the team at Fox just now I think they're also, we, we track a film on a daily basis I think they're all exceptionally passionate it's strategy that needs to be adopted and I, I think everybody has to just now make sure the budget of a film is in control once you have that there's no way that this industry can't maintain its strength, it's the budgets and that and, and the ridiculous investment that that you know is being put into a film that you know may not have a large eyeball audience. Like you have to be very, very clever about those things. Like, you know, and not not fall, uh, you know, prey into just big names because there is no guarantee that big names equal big success. You have to be, you, it's also the theme of film. You have to look at, holistically, you have to look at a product and say, does this film have the bandwidth to do that number if this is what we're investing in? You need strategy, you need your resources to be intelligent about that kind of strategy. So you need to do that. You will lose money, perhaps, in movies. But the losses should not be so monumental that you'd want to shut shop. But back in the day again, uh, and up until, in fact, even seven, eight years ago, Karan, uh, I mean, if a Spielberg movie came out, none of you would care, right? It's okay, fine. Some Hollywood movies coming out. And suddenly, you know, like for instance... Will not worry us. But <laughs> okay. Fast and the Furious will. But did it worry you? Would, would it have worried you? Say, no, not at all. Not at all. Because so as I changed, said, right? the multiplex, the, the audiences, they, the lines are totally blurred. The thing is that uh, that, that we have stopped. We uh, a lot of our content has become me too of what they do. If we updated our storytelling and made very strong thematic films that were actually not borrowed or me too versions, but created our own content, we can make our own Lord of the Rings. We need to make it our way, keeping our enormous culture in mind. We can make our own love stories with its own organic issues and problems. The thing is what happens when we start emulating. Then that's when you start losing an audience to better products of the same genre. You have to maintain, and I'm not, I'm, I'm saying it progressively. Mm. You can, when you make a Pico, it's an amazing indie film. Mm. It's outstanding. It retains its inherent value system or the culture of our country and does a spin. I mean, come on, we all know that, you know, constipation is a big problem in our country because of the food we eat, mm. you know. And But look at the spin-off on that film. Like, it's just amazing when you see a film like, like or when you see a film like Nija, which is a true biopic of, of, of a of a person of our land who was fought a brave story. These are examples. Now, none of these are me-toos of anything you've seen anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Nija was no Aaron Brockovich. It maintained its identity. And, and for certainly, Piku was not like Little Miss Sunshine or anything else. Mm -hmm. It maintained its own individuality. That's what we need to do, is retain our individuality, not sell our content or emulate our content with anything else. And we will always create our own work. It's the problems happen in movies, is recently if our action films are all seeming like they're like poorer versions of things that are seen. So obviously an audience will run to see Fast and the Furious because they don't want to see something that is a substandard version of the very same thing in our land. So it's that has to be maintained. You have to maintain your individuality. And the only time countries in the world have actually fumbled and failed prey to Hollywood is when they lost their own essence. In world cinema as well, be it French, Polish, German, everyone. I mean, they lost their essence. They started doing things the Hollywood way. Hollywood came and took over. 
see hollywood is is has the bandwidth it has the infrastructure it has the it has 100 years of history they are very capable of taking over you till you maintain your own strength we have such a large commercial base and a, such a large domestic uh, faithful audience that we should in no means leave, lose our individuality but if you were to for instance make a film that would be a hollywood blockbuster prototype as it were uh, you obviously can't because the, the numbers or the, or the kind of scale that hollywood can afford nobody in andheri can or, or or india can now it's the same so clearly that's, that what, that's what we have to like they, they will invest if they realize our cinema if you notice the biggest hits of hindi cinema that have all the supposed 300 crore club mm -hmm. apk sultan pajrangi bhaijan none of these films they're all emotional stories none of them are high on cg none of them are have got flying people there none of them are firefighting and and the world is coming to an end and there's one team of avengers who are avenging all these three are emotional dramas that have are rooted in the culture of our land in terms of emotion and they have all done 300 crores plus because these are the, now more power to those that content and more of such movies have to be made on larger scales because they are not me too's that's what works so that's what we need to start doing is basically go back to the core content writing needs to be empowered so much needs to be done we don't need to make like we don't need to do what they do they're doing it phenomenally well but they can't do what we do nobody can do drama and emotion the way we do it i've seen the reaction of our films even in the western world when i went to Cannes or to berlin or like i remember 2001 i mean this is of course strange now i remember we were showing at the Cannes market we showed kabhi kushi kabhi gum and they've never stopped a film midway because they don't know the concept of an interval you know but we stopped and everybody started clapping at interval and walked out sad <laughs> and they said that oh my god what a dark film uh, how how bollywood film has just ended so sad and this is so tragic that you know he's been banished from the house and the film has ended and so dark so I was like no 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 there's a whole one and a half month left the second brother has to go back now and there are going to be four more songs and they looked at and the German lady looked at me aghast and she said what will I do about dinner I said when you watch a Bollywood film you don't eat dinner <laughs> so I, I was like this. And so I was just like they were, it's a huge hit in Germany by the way it is huge. and at yeah. the end of that film I'm not lying to you I felt I was at a funeral and someone deep that they all loved was dead I, I think they were so exhausted because they had not cried so much in their entire life <laughs> as much as they cried in those three hours and 32 minutes and they were like just like transfixed by the emotion because everything in their cinema is so subtle but we come and yank your souls out like you know we beg you to cry like you know as filmmakers we make you fall to, we make you reach such a point that you're weeping and we are still at it you know because that's the way we are as filmmakers you know we don't let you go so fast it's the way it is with cinema you know in india and what we do they can't do they don't know how to do it the way we make people cry, no one can. You know, and, and like it's just the way. So if you retain your soul, you maintain your entire. And they, they will, they, we will always maintain. Like we have an interval. Like when Sid Field and God bless his soul came and gave a master class on screenplay, I wanted to meet him and ask him one question. I'm like, sir, how do you write this with a? Th how do you write three acts with an interval? Do you know it's the biggest problem? We keep on going on our writing, our writing, our writing, but ladies and gentlemen, we have an interval. We peak twice in movies. <laughs> we have to, because you go like that, and <clears throat> interval. Then you have to come back and start your story. Who does that anywhere else in the world? We are never given credit that it's a, when you write a great film in Hindi or Indian cinema, you must understand it is a piece of genius if you get it right. Because no writer in the world has to deal with what we have to deal with. We have to deal with an interview. People stop the movie, go out, talk on the floor to each other, eat and come back and then you have to absorb their attention all over again. How is it possible? All of you as a bunch of critics, I mean, have to account for the fact that when you have an interval, we are the only land that talks about film in two halves. You know, we are like, first half achiti, second half nithi, second half achiti, first half nithi. I mean, like, in the world, they don't get this. I want to tell you, you go out to the world, they're like, what do you mean the first half is not good, the second half is good, is the film good or not? I'm like, no, but hamare yaan hota hai, interval ke baad kya chali picture? Or interval ke baad, interval ke baad pop ho gai, dam gir gai picture, are you? But, but you've liked one and a half hours, but you've not liked the last one, so you've hated the movie. But what about the first one and a half hours that you like? But that's the problem is the interval. So no screenplay lesson in the world. No, when people go abroad to learn, I tell them, go for fun, go to LA and you know, have your fun and come back. Don't waste your time because when you come back here, yaha, jina yaha, marna yaha. Iske seva jana kaha. Because you will only, I can tell you what the power of an interval is. Like my father used to tell me when I was young, 
इंटरवल के बाद बफर सीन रखो ऐसे बफर सीन का क्या मतलब होता है वो जब पॉपकॉर्न वॉपकॉर्न खाते हैं ना तो पहला सीन ऐसा होना फ्लैट होना चाहिए कोई ज्यादा इन्फॉर्मेशन नहीं देना चाहिए इंटरवल के बाद हाउ टू राइट दिस थिंग हाउ डू अकाउंट फॉर अ बफर सीन वॉट इज अ बफर सीन हाउ डू एक्सप्लेन टू यू एज अ मेन स्ट्रीम क्रिटिक दैट आई रोट अ बफर सीन बिकॉज यू आर ईटिंग पॉपकॉर्न इज नॉट माई फॉल्ट यू नो सो दैट सो दीज वर दी ओल्ड स्कूल काइंड ऑफ थियरीज एंड आई थिंक दैट वी आर अ यूनिक कंट्री because we stop our narrative and start it again and we, and and now we do it to hollywood films as well i feel sorry for those hollywood filmmakers if they ever saw their films in in at a pvr or at a fun because they stop the movie wherever they want <laughs> and then start it whenever they have to you know it's wonderful only we do that in our land so at some level do we do we see a return huh? there's no return of no. of that producer they are probably not existent right now and probably don't no, have to be those same people coming back but but the, the model no, they are not I mean, they're dead <laughs> they can't come back <laughs> they are all dead we have to at our ground level make sure that we kind of and i'm not saying we have to be progressive as i said in content it's all we need to do my aunt it's simple mathematic your budget has to keep in mind the genre of film and the extent at which it can do it's a simple stroke of paper you write down your recoveries of music overseas potential india potential which you must take an average recovery number mm. a satellite number and now a digital number then spend accordingly pay accordingly put riders on payment if you want a big star who loves your screenplay should come along just like the way it is in the west you have to have it's an it has to be an inclusive exercise now you have to sit down with a great script go to good actors and pretend they are not movie stars because today every time you set up a project it's going to fall flat on its face if i overpay anyone who's not giving me the eyeballs how am i going to make sure that the studio makes money if i'm borrowing studio money i bloody well make sure that the studio makes money it's my job to do that otherwise i will be wiped off and vanish so when i have fox money with me today i have a wonderful deal with them every single day i make sure that they they that i work towards them making money it's only then that i will feel empowered so the responsibility on the producer is tremendous and he or she has to take that responsibility we cannot look at studios as sheer banks that are stream rolling money for us and we cannot be accountable that is ridiculous if i built a bungalow and they left their job i should feel completely shitty about it and i refuse to be that person or producer i'll never be but you know the the, the old world producer as you say this is that you do that you are everybody's buddy i'm just i'm just available and accessible i mean you know i think much to do about nothing mayank you can't take yourself too seriously in any job you could be president of the country and i think you should not take yourself seriously what i do is a job i owe i owe my accessibility to my fraternity and the people within it be it members of the media or be it, as much as i can i'm accessible i mean that's the only thing that i can do because we people need people we need to we need each other for us to survive within the domain and it's difficult for you to, if you alienate yourself and put yourself up on a pedestal and no one can reach you from that pedestal all you will do is fall you know there is no way so accessibility affability and amiability these are the three a's i live by and that's the only mantra i have so that's the opening chapter of your book okay. well, well, I, I, well i don't know i never i and none of them could be friends of mine by the way Uh, they, they could they Thank could you. be they could be healthy acquaintances sure. because friends you don't make friends and you don't make family that easily friends happen with period of time but being being nice and being cooperative and just being a member of the fraternity without any trappings i think is just the way and i don't take myself too seriously because i know if i have a success today i'll have a failure next next week or next month and that should not take away from who i stand for as a filmmaker you'll go through your ups and downs but doesn't mean if you're on a up you behave like you know you're you're superior a feeling of superiority is so stupid and so last season like i feel like it's just not the way to be when i see certain filmmakers or actors on that zone i feel like it's so short lived because you know it's the the biggest names in the in the in the world and in the industry are the ones that will actually call you immediately when they have something mm. they will call you people in between won't call you like i've learned this when i've seen people like someone like yash chopra who was like a father figure to me 7 in the morning he has to get his call for anything he wanted you call mr bachchan he'll call you back the greatest people in the movie industry are the most accessible people it's the middle order who don't know where they are the <laughs> ones that actually are the ones that you'll never get a reply from you'll then send them incessant text messages and there'll be no reply and those are the ones you know will not last forever speaking of last season 
what we're looking forward to is the. Uh, <laughs> it's just another season. Yeah. We haven't created many more stars to have, so there's nothing new. It's, it's me. It's the same lot. It's the same lot in different combinations. Luckily, they have new enemies, lovers, and controversies. So, <laughs> so that keeps changing. Nothing else is going to change. I want to. I can assure you. When people say what's new, I'm like nothing. <laughs> I'm older, they are older, and they just have more combinations to deal with. It will be as fun, it always is. I mean, Coffee with Karan is, is what I do as a hobby that, is, that pays really well. <laughs> it's somehow, it's that, that Coffee with Karan and Fox are my two funding <laughs> studios. <laughs> are you starting with Fawad Khan? No, I'm not, I haven't yet reached the combination. There's okay. been a lot of conjecture about that. But no, we're, we're, we're zeroing in on our episode one, we'll announce it soon. Super. Uh, questions from the audience? And you know what not to ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you should be clever enough because you will get a silent smile and have my aunt say, please, could you restrict yourself to questions relating to the topic? <laughs> Am I right, ma'am? Yeah. Right. Totally. While he sips his coffee. <laughs> Hi, Karan. I am uh, Major Mohammad Ali Shah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Hi. Hi, hi. Uh, you know, I would rate you as one of the supreme filmmakers in the country. And uh, me, coming from a theatre background, I want to know, as a filmmaker, does theatre appeal you as well? Uh, I have great regard for talent on any platform. I'm not much of a viewer and I have to admit uh, to my, um, I would say my, my own unhappiness that I haven't much, uh, watched much of theatre in India. Um, it's simply because I've just not been able to kind of, and I say making no time for it would be actually demean the amazing, uh, I think, talent that is on theatre. I just haven't, I haven't had friends around me who've actually encouraged me to go and see theatre. I've heard a lot, and I know there are people who are fantastic and do amazing work on theatre. But yes, actors on theatre, I've definitely engaged with and worked with, and I, I would love to. And I think it's the age of, of talent that comes from all possible verticals in the entertainment zone. But to answer your question, I haven't seen much of theatre in India. I'll invite you for my play, Karan. Thank you, you but I don't know what you look like because this light is right on your face. <laughs> yes, right. Right. Meet Shah. Recently, uh, Karan is uh, Nasi's nephew. He was there at the session yesterday. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. oh, well, well, he's a theatre veteran mm -hmm. and amazing and makes great copy for anyone who interviews him. Thanks. Thanks, Karan. I can hear you. Yeah. Among the current crop of actors, you asked uh, ki, kyo hai? and you said it's literally impossible to cross the Khans or Yesterday uh, Kapoor's uh, or whatever in uh, the popularity. So, you said that it's very difficult because they already had their base from the footfalls. Now, do you also think uh, one reason can you attribute this to this fact that the gap between the celebrity and the common man? is also getting bridged, you know, jab hum log bade the, like, when I was watching your movie Kuch Kuch Hotra Hai, in a very small town in Bihar. So I used to like it. Mujhe bahut achha laga tha, main chhota tha to. Lekin abhi main apni bhaanji ko film dikha raha tha, usse pasand nahi hai. To ab logo ko ye samajh mein aara hai ki ye pyar, mohabbat, ye sab filmi chizhe hai, aur real life mein aisa hota nahi hai. Humari time mein aisa lata tha, haa, aisa hi hota hai. Ladki ko doh waliye kiya to haa ye. Jabki abhi aisa hota nahi hona nahi chahi. Vari kathod dil hai to vari kathod. और मेरे दिल को ये छू गई है बात कि आपकी भांजी को मेरी पहली फिल्म पसंद नहीं है इस बात का बहुत रोना होगा मुझे रात को मैं फूट फूट के रोने वाला हूँ कि आपकी भांजी को मेरी फिल्म पसंद नहीं आई देखिए खैर आपका कहना मैं मानता हूँ कि वो वो फिल्मों का जो सुर था और जो टोनालिटी था उस जमाने में वो एक इनसेंस थी उस फिल्म में जब हम कहते थे उस फिल्म में कि प्यार दोस्ती है लव इस फ्रेंडशिप वो थीम को मैंने आज पे उस पर मैं आज भी मैंने फिल्म बनाई है लेकिन अपडेट किया उसकी टोनालिटी को सिंटैक्स को ताकि आपकी भांजी को पसंद आ जाए <laughs> तो आ, क्योंकि अब आपकी भांजी मेरी बरोमीटर बन चुकी है आ, तो आ, लेकिन कि वो एक ऑर्गेनिक इनसेंस था उस फिल्म में जो मैं भी जब मैं भी 24 साल का था जब मैं वो फिल्म मैंने लिखी है और मैं इंस्पायर था राज कपूर से या चोपड़ा से और वो फिल्म है वो खैर दैट इज वन टॉपिक तो उस वो वो एक इनसेंस थी उन उस जमाने में जो आज मैं वो वही फिल्म नहीं लिख सकता जब मैं खुद कुछ कुछ होता है देखता हूँ आई वॉज जोकिंग अर्लियर बट वन आई सी कुछ कुछ होता है टूडे और कभी खुशी कभी गम आई मै सेल्फ वंडर कि मैंने ये क्यों लिखा कैसे लिखा कहाँ से ख्याल मेरे जहन में आए क्योंकि एक्चुअली कुछ कुछ होता है बहुत ही अनयूजली सिली थीम है क्योंकि पता नहीं उस आठ चिट्ठियों में वो माँ ने क्या लिखा था चार साल का बच्चा क्या पढ़ता है वो वो इतनी कन्विक्शन के साथ कि आठ चिट्ठियाँ माँ ने छोड़ी है पर क्या लिखा होगा पहली चिट्ठी में दूसरी चिट्ठी 
खुशी में कि वो बच्चा सुन सके या पढ़ सके वो लॉजिक वो कहता है मैं जिंदगी में प्यार एक ही बार होता है शादी एक बार होती है खुद उसने दो दो बार प्यार किया है शादी दो दो बार की है सारा गलत था लेकिन इतना कन्विक्शन इतनी कन्विक्शन के साथ लिखी थी कि इट मेड ऑल सेंस टूडे हम लॉजिक के बारे में सोचेंगे आज तक मुझे किसी ने पूछे पूछे कहा शाहरुख खान का प्रोफेशन क्या था कुछ कुछ होता है no क्या है ऐसे आई डोंट नो बिजनेस था क्या बिजनेस इतना बिजनेस था कि उसको इतना वक्त मिल गया कि वो समर कैंप में एक महीना जाके बैठ गया कि कौन सा वो एम्पायर रन कर रहा था इट वॉज क्वाइट सीरी लाइक शबाना जी कॉल्ड मी कुछ कुछ होता है कि स्क्रीनिंग उन्होंने कहीं देखी थी बर्विंग में आपकी भांजी की तरह शी ऑल्सो हैड प्रॉब्लम सो शी कॉल्ड मी एंड शी सेट के भाई ये क्या हुआ खूबसूरत नहीं थी तो प्यार नहीं हुआ खूबसूरत हो गई साड़ी पहनने लगी बाल बड़े हो गए और इश्क हो गया उसे क्या कहना चाहोगे आई सेट सॉरी आई सेट आई डोंट नो यू आर राइट आई डोंट नो बट आई नो जस्टिफिकेशन आई एम जस्ट सॉरी बिकॉज दैट्स व्हाट इट इज और अगर आप कभी खुशी कभी गम देखोगे तो द फॉर्मेट ऑफ कभी खुशी कभी गम इज द एग्जैक्ट सेम फॉर्मेट ऑफ कुछ कुछ होता है जहां से शुरू होता है फ्लैश में इंटरवल पॉइंट कहाँ बैठ जाता है और फिर ऋतिक रोशन इज द सना बेबी सना ऑफ कुछ कुछ होता है वो जाके अपना फैमिली इट्स द सेम स्क्रीन प्ले Which I I actually realized much later that time I thought I was making epic रामायण ऑफ फैमिली एक्चुअली इट्स द सेम स्टोरी ऑफ कुछ कुछ होता है इट्स सेम थिंग बट एज एम ट्राइंग से इनोसेंस इज डेट टूडे वहां एक इनोसेंस था और वो फिल्म स्टार्स की एक अपनी अपील थी आज क्या हो गया कि ट्विटर पे सब जानते हैं कि लोग क्या कर रहे हैं तो जैसे कि आपकी अब यंगर जनरेशन की आवाज कर रहे हैं the whole mystique and magic of movie stardom is that पिंक वेला पे आ चुके हैं एयरपोर्ट के बाहर निकल रहे ये और ने आप देख रहे हो कपड़े क्या पहन रहे कहा जा रहे हैं किससे बातें कर रहे हैं the paper all of the place. Where is the mystery? You wanted to know उस जमाने में लॉन्जेबिटी ऑफ इट सुपर स्टार्स विल ऑलवेज एक्सिस्ट है लॉन्जेबिलेज बी सेलिब्रिटीज एंड स्टार्स बट लाइक वो जो आपकी चाह है टू फाइंड आउट एक स्टार के बारे में जो आप शायद जब आप बड़े हो रहे थे जब आप बच्चे थे और आपने पिक्चरें देखी मेरी तरह एक मिस्टेक होता था मैं खुद फिल्म इंडस्ट्री का हिस्सा था लेकिन जब अमिताभ बच्चन से मेरी मुलाकात होती थी तो मेरी माय नीज इज टू सांसी की यू नो यू कैन आई यूज टू फील के माय गॉड यू नो अमिताभ बच्चन आया है मेरे सामने मैं और मैं उनके पैर छूता हूं विद रिस्पेक्ट आई स्टिल डू इट बट देयर वाज अ मिस्ट्री आजकल के बच्चे हमारे उनको उनको लगता है क्योंकि आंगन में ये स्टार्स खेल रहे हैं क्योंकि वाकई वो हर जगह घूमो टेलीविजन पे हो सोशल मीडिया पे हो ट्विटर पे हो फेसबुक पे हो हर जगह आते थे पॉपिंग अप यू नो ऑल ओवर द प्लेस दैट दे बिकम पॉप अप्स नाउ दे स्टॉप बीइंग स्टार्स थैंक यू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आहा Yeah. Hi, Hi. Uh, so my question is with regards to the upcoming uh, short films and web series, and as a product, how you see them? Like whole. I, I think we them. still have to get our digital act together. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of talk about like this. Everything suddenly that is not being made into a film, people think that should be made into a series. Correct. That doesn't mean anything. You should actually structure. It has to be a structured format and a platform that you actually. empower so right now we are still i think very nascent we are dabbling all over the place everyone's talking everyone's web series bana rahe web series bana rahe go digital go short it doesn't mean anything right now it means it will find its feet but in a while you know it's it's right now i think it's too nascent a stage and i think that it needs a lot of larger forces to make stronger content for it to really be an empowered platform So are you venturing into it like you said that you would I'm, like to take risk and not play safe Well I would like to it's definitely on the avenue of Dharma Productions but not right now we we are still like trying to make sure that we make our movies right All the best Thank you Hi Karan Hi I'm I'm big fan of yours Thank you Maine aapki movie kuch kuch hota hai kai baar dekhi hai aur usi ka main music play karna chahta hu Mohit Arvind se आप रिकॉर्ड कीजिए अपने भांजी को सुनाइए
Thank you. Can you see songs ever, ever being modified or even leaving our films in the way we've known them? Like Shah Rukh did. I never want to see a Hindi film without a song. I mean, I'm obsessed with Hindi film music. It's what I grew up on. It's what I attach. My memories are all song related. For me, I won't know how to make a film without a song. And if I did, it would be... Um, even in the very short film I made in yeah. Bombay Talkies, I had music in it. Um, it's just, it's deep into the into my DNA as a filmmaker. I don't want to go without a song. I never do. So I just know that... a song play before a script comes to your mind? No, it sometimes the situation lends itself. Today, of course, we're all being very clever about justifying why. Mm -hmm. Like like say, in Aedile Mushkil, Ranbir is a singer. So he, that's why he lip syncs. Mm -hmm. You know, now we've applied logic. Right. Uh, but... Uh, I, I, I cannot, I don't know how to shoot a film without a song. Like, I'm obsessed. That's the only music I listen to is Hindi film music. I know nothing that's happening in the world of Western music. I hear that only because I want to update my skill as a, as a filmmaker who's making relevant music in today's times. But I, I, for me, music is the soul of our films. Okay. Next question. Hi, Karin, sir. Hello. First of all, I would like to thank you as you have entertained every one of us for over years. <laughs> thank you. I okay. would like to ask you that uh, as you told you have grown as typical film child, did it ever came to your mind that you should be an actor rather than a director? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It came to my father's mind first um, <laughs> because, you know, all papas na, they, they, and mamas, <laughs> they all think that their children are great looking. So he used to look at me and say that, puppy fat hai, chala jayega, tu hero ban ja. uh, I was the only one who was more intelligent than that. And I knew that there was no part of me that should have been in front of the camera. Of course, as a movie star in a country, not at all. Uh, so yeah, there were those aspirations that were kind of trained. My, my father was a lovely man and loved me immensely. And according to him, I was the best look, looking person on planet Earth. Uh, but then he was my dad and he had no objectivity at all. Uh, fortunately, my Did mother... He wanted to yeah. till I was afraid that he would really and I was like, uh, uh, you know, uh, and my mother was always shifty when he would say it because she didn't want to break my heart and say, no, Karan, you can't be in front of the camera. And he used to say, Are, I was about 200 kilos fat and he said, puppy fat. Hai. I mean, you know, what does he mean? This, this is the death of most children when their parents think their obesity is puppy fat. I mean, I was not, there was no puppy fat. I was the entire like, like the whole, <laughs> like I was like huge. But he was like, you're so good looking you should be a hero and there was no part of him I believed because I knew what the mirror told me and I knew that there was no truth to it but but, the, I, but when I see many other people who come into movies clearly they listen to their parents <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't but you're a legend actor now I mean you've done a proper full length role listen I'm a really sad actor because after my disastrous debut as in the film didn't work I've not even got one offer and I mean like I'm not even one that I could say no to proudly you know not even a bad offer came to me I was like really shattered I thought I did a halfway decent job in that film and I was like and I even read all my reviews. I got very well reviewed and no one has come to me with even a bad role in a film. I am really upset about that. I really want to refuse an acting role. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hello, sir. Hey, Anji. So, I want to ask, uh, like, Coffee with Karan is running over the years, like Mayang said. So, from uh, se saat saal pehle, you hosted a show on Neutrigenia Lift Karade for a social cause. So, aage bhi aap is tarah ke kuch shows karna chahenge? Kaam leke aaye. Thank you. 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 No, 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 I'm just joking. Uh, of course, no, no, I lift kara de, I kiya tha. it was a Yashraj show and it had a terrific message and uh, I haven't been offered anything after that in that zone. Last two questions, sir. Uh, huh? Yes, thank you. Uh, I want to ask, do you find competition from regional cinema and if yes, why don't you make regional cinema? I, I feel I should make cinema that I understand. Like, I feel like I should never dwell in a language that I don't understand the syntax of. While I'm amazed with the rise and I have more power to like say Marathi cinema which is phenomenal. Like I was blown away by the by the sheer brilliance of Sairat. When I saw it just now and I was like so proud sitting and watching like a film which was so compelling goes on to do this kind of business. I'm like more power and I hope that all the cinema 
I'm a big fan of cinema, my dear. So be it from any language, I will watch it and enjoy it and relish it. But to make it is an art form of its own and I would never want to be just a, a business model just because like if the cinema has a large audience, I won't do it because I personally don't understand the beat of that language. Like I need to know the beat of it. Like that's why I'm uncomfortable making even an English language film because that's not the syntax though I speak it. And it's my thinking language but I still don't understand how to do it. Like I won't be able to like that's why I would only I will always only direct Hindi language films. I have no interest in making English language movies. I love the Hindi cinema that I grew up on and that's all I ever want to do. As, as, a, as a producer Karan, do you see uh, say the rise of film like Bahubali you know, it just came and it shattered all records. Yeah. And then you see a film like Sarat, which almost touched a hundred crore. Yeah. Do you see that as a new, as a new place, new avenue in terms of competition? No, well, you already it's, have well, Hollywood. Well, it's 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 definitely a rising industry, and of mm. course, to immediately view it as competition would be again nascent. Sure. But it's fine. Like Bahubali today is a threat to any huge Hindi film. Nobody will come with it. Mm. Bahubali is a huge film. It's emerged as one of the largest movie experiences of Indian cinema. And more power to Rajamoli, sir. I mean, who's actually gone, like literally given a large section of his life to that film. And that's why it deserves all that applause. And I, I mean, every, I don't know a single person who doesn't want to watch its right. conclusion. I mean, it's like, it's, it's beyond exciting, that film. I mean, I know when I watched the first part, and though we were presenting it, I was sitting there like an avid Sinegoa fan. Like when I hugged Rajamoli, I felt like, Forget any big filmmaker in the world, Raj Mali is my man. Because he made it and he showed us the path. And that's amazing. It's so, 20,000 crore, huh, by the way, for that film. Is that true? Sorry? The, not even the limit. I mean, mm. for that film can do anything. Because it can just... Who knew what the first was going to do? You know, so you never know where it can go, where it can land. One last question. Sir. Okay. okay. Hazel, my name is Shadab. I really like the movie Kuch Kuch Oda. I don't know why you said you did not like the no, no, I liked it very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I just don't love you know, his auntie didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> My question is related with the topic because now uh, all the uh, studios are getting shut down. But you, Adit Chobla and Sajid Nadir, these people, those people have family background in the film industry. I think those people are really working hard and they're choosing this very carefully because they have brand name with their family. Because of that, you people are being successful. But if I'll see the studios, they are normally just doing their job because they have to work, they have to choose. That's the answer. What's the question? The question is because those people are shutting down because they are not putting heart in the script and you people are putting I the don't, heart. I don't, I think we're being unfair to the studios. I think everybody works really hard. Okay. Some calculations go wrong, some budgets as we discussed. Actually, it's a summation. Your question is a summation of what we've been discussing for the last hour. Um, and I really think focus on writing, budgeting right is the way forward. And I think it's unfair actually to blame the studios or the human resources employed by the studios because sometimes I think just certain calculations have gone wrong and results in certain changes. It's also a bunch of take down pieces do, uh, doing the rounds on the internet. The other, like, it, it's amounting to conjecture and conspiracy theory. I mean, at the end of the day, nobody knows any true right. facts. It's all, it's very easy to write an article. You know, but it you know has to come but from like down especially. Yeah, so I mean it's very easy to have an analysis mm -hmm. then. I mean, you know, who's it's all you need to do is your desktop and your thoughts. But you know, how much do you know? What is the real true fact? What are the reasons why studios take decisions? Those are things that only the internal workings of that studio will be able to tell you. And I don't think we are, none of us are in a place to answer those questions. Right. One last question. Sir yeah, uh, person there. What's it, what's it? Sir? Thank you. Uh, hi hi Karan. Uh, hi. I'm a very big fan of uh, Colors Infinity as well. So I watched that a lot, Shark Tank and etc. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I want to ask you a question. As a filmmaker, you told us that uh, Shah Rukh, Salman, etc. They have bigger popularity, and Dhawan or Siddharth and Ranveer, Ranveer, uh, they are not getting it much because of the generation and <coughs> the rest of it. So I am a lawyer, but I want to get into acting. So I want to ask you a very selfish question because all this discussion has really worried me. That if I want to get into the uh, film industry, I'm not even the Dhawan or the Kapoor or the Ranveer Singh. Would you actually suggest me that Neha just go back to the Bombay High Court and practice? <laughs> no, I would say that if you have if you have the right if you are a good actor and you find the right platform where you get notice. Of the four names you mentioned, Ranveer Singh and Siddharth Malhotra are not from the movies. You know, there's so many actors. The biggest movie stars in this country are not from movie industry families. Be it Mr. Amitabh Bachchan or Shah Rukh Khan, I'm down to so many actors. Be it from Priyanka Chopra to so many amazing talents. They're not. Yeah. They're not from the movie industry. They've made their mark. They've had 
of course there's always a combination of sincerity talent and, and destiny which which no one can be accountable for but i would say that that definitely at the end of the day if you have the talent and you have the right adequate platform where you get noticed and when i talked about varun and siddharth and veer and ranveer i said they're all immensely talented amazing movie stars it's just that we were comparing them to the equity built by the by the stars who had like a heads up from the 80s and 90s uh, I would say being in the movies is a gorgeous place even today. It's the best place in the world. Where else can you sing, dance, laugh and cry and still be at work? So, I mean, follow your dreams, but give your dreams an expiry date. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Thank you. So, I think, I think we're winding up. Um, so, things I've learned is Colors Infinity, that's, that's what you're saying.